congratulations for that performance. It was, as we said, so moving for us to watch. Um, and you wrote the lyrics, Peter, didn't you, to the song? I wrote the lyrics, yes. How difficult, you know, we found it very moving to watch, very poignant. How difficult was it for you all to get through it, to actually get those words out? Well, for myself, I just, I just love to express my emotions about my son who's been missing since 1988. And it's the only chance, really, I can get to do that. Um, mm. You know, I tend to bottle up my emotions. And he was Guys, 15. I, yeah, and, and the thing is, it's not just about the voices of everybody in the choir. Let's not forget your own children here, because surely this gives them a voice. People are talking about them. People are remembering them again after after all the years. I mean, Peter, for you, 30 years. Peter, for you, eight years. And uh, Denise, for you. 28 years since since your, your children went missing yes is that what is this about awareness as well obviously you, you said you will find it very therapeutic but is this about giving your children that voice and it, making it, it people certainly remember? is cathartic to sing about our loved ones mm -hmm. but also we're promoting awareness of the issues of missing children and and, and adults mm -hmm. and we're promoting awareness of the wonderful charity missing people mm -hmm. um, and it is that charity that's got you together peter isn't it um, how much comfort does that give you to be amongst other people who've, who have missing children? I think children? that's the, the whole point of it, Ruth. Uh, um, a lot of us in the choir are in the same position in that we've got loved ones missing. Some in the choir work for the charity and others are supporters. But we, we all know each other's position and that's what does give the comfort. And, and I suppose, Denise, because you know that, you know the support that, that people need and I presume you probably all need it at different points. How have you found this experience of being involved with these people in your choir, knowing that they will understand when you have a breakdown, when you're very sad, how to help you? It's very comforting to know that there are people, friends there, who understand the pain you're in and uh, are there for you. And how did you get involved in the choir? Did you, had you heard about it? Were you instrumental in setting it up? How, how did you get involved in the first place? I was involved with the Missing People charity over the years. And um, we, we were aware that a choir was being formed mm. and, asked, and were asked if we'd like to join. So I put my hand up. Um, your tell me, and tell me what Charles. it's like when you actually, when I, you actually sing. Is it Charles who comes to mind for you? Well, I'm a voice for the missing, for those who can't speak for themselves. And also, I'm able to sing to Charles, mm. sing my heart out for him. And you haven't given up 28 years ago since he went missing in, in Canada. And, and you're going out to Canada soon? Hopefully in the fall. Mm -hmm. Peter, what about, what about Claudia, the most high profile of the missing people that we're talking about? Eight years past now. It's eight years. Seems a long time to me, obviously, compared to these two. It, it's not. Uh, but every day, uh, somebody comes up uh, and mentions Claudia, so it's there all the time. But in this performance that uh, we did for the audition for BGT, the massive audience there absolutely amazed with the song and of course all the images behind what does that do to you every single day of your life knowing you know or not knowing rather? it's the not what? knowing i've always said that for eight years and it literally does just eat away at you yeah um and peter you must know that feeling too um with your son he went to a football match and didn't well, come home we, we thought he was planning to go to a football match mm. but he ne never I've got, got there and he didn't come home and I mean those first few weeks were an absolute living nightmare but since I've met these wonderful people in the choir and missing people mm. charity they, they've helped me through this mm. and uh, we, we try to live as normal as life as possible in the hope that we will finally one day. Peter there's always campaigns and you know we have been part of them we've been on various programs talking about it year after year about missing people but this is something that really has caught people's imagination. In a way, has that surprised you? It's astonished me. I mean, this, this has all emanated from a dream. Did, did you know about that? Um, about 2013, I dreamt that I was singing a song about my son who'd been missing. And Claire at the charity suggested I sing it at um, a Christmas carol concert. I couldn't sing. I'm not a musician, I couldn't write a song, 
and I thought she was joking, so I jokingly agreed. And then she sent me along to meet James Hawkins in a recording studio, and he taught me to sing in, a, in an hour. <laughs> Uh, made a backing track for me. I, I performed that song at the charity concerts, got a standing ovation, 800 people, and I felt absolutely uh, wonderful. It was a wonderful experience to be able to sing about my song. It's been missing so many years. And they thought, well, if it helped me, it could help others. And they formed this wonderful charity. And uh, then there so you are on choir. the Britain's Got Talent yeah. stage.